uh, before turning the questions out to you guys, I just want to ask you two, um, how, what inspired you to make the film, and what did you think when Neil approached you about having a documentary about your life? Um, I was inspired by Wayne White. I met him 12 years ago, and uh, anyone my age, uh, his entire body of work was targeted right at me. He was Playhouse, and Beatman's World, and the, the Fine Art. He had me in mind all those years. Uh, and um, so when I met him, I was instantly impressed by his resume, but also I got to know the guy and saw the personality up there. <laughs> and uh, so that's, that's what inspired me, just, just him. You know? <laughs> and when he first uh, told me he was going to make a documentary about me, I thought of all these documentaries, you know, they're exposés, you know. The guy starts off looking like, looking like a prince and he winds up an asshole, you know. The guy like hangs himself, he's talking along, blah, 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 blah. you're thinking, oh man, this guy's the worst, you know. But uh, Neil came through, and it's a beautiful story, and I always say that one of the greatest human desires we all have is to have our story told. And I was lucky enough to have my story told in probably the greatest art form alive, cinema, and uh, it's a great gift, and I am very happy to be here presenting this to you. And, Thank you, Neil Berkeley, very much. So we're going to have roving mics. Uh, so when we call on you, if you can wait until you have the mic in your hand to ask your question, that would be great. So, who wants to go? Who? Okay. I'd like to know what astrological sign you and your wife are. Believe it or not, I am Virgo the Virgin. And my wife is Leo. Yeah, she's a fierce woman. And Neil is a Virgo also. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. I had nothing to do with that, yes. Anybody. Anybody. Um, I'd just like to know, how did you get involved with uh, Peter Gabriel and the Smashing Pumpkins? Well, Peter Gabriel came about because the director of the first season of Pee-wee, Stephen Johnson, was uh, hired by him to direct the big time video. He had previously directed a video called, uh, what was that first one called? Steam? Uh, um, Sledgehammer, that's right. And, and, and Big Time was sort of Sledgehammer too, as far as visual approach. So that was a, a case where I was on the inside and I had a good connection. The Smashing Pumpkins kind of thing came about because I was uh, friends with uh, Jonathan Dayton and Valerie Ferris, you know, the great directors of Little Miss Sunshine. And uh, they had wanted to work with me for years. Again, an insider job, you know, that's the one thing you got to learn about art, you know, you got to get in there and make the friends and find the inside connections. It's who you know in this world, it really is. But I was, I was lucky enough to come along at the peak of the music video era in the late 80s, early 90s. And it was a great time to be a, to be a production designer. Hi, um, I just wanted to ask, uh, that show that you're doing where you're doing the slides, the presentation, is that something that you do, uh, talks in front of people, or was that done for the documentary? And um, the other question, um, I forgot, so go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> See, I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, that show was, uh, I was tricked into doing that show with this guy. You know, I've been doing a boring kind of slide talk that all artists do at universities. And he was like, you know, why don't we pump this thing up? And why don't you like uh, bring in some puppets and some more pictures and play the banjo? And I'll, I'll see what I can do. And lo and behold, he got me booked into the Cornet Theater that you see there at the top of the show, top of the movie. That is an incredibly hip room in L.A. All the top comics work there. And I couldn't believe it. Mr. Tom Sawyer here painting the fence, you know. Hey, come on over here. This is fun, you know. Before I knew it. I was on stage doing a one-hour monologue, scripted, rehearsed, puppets, banjo, and I still hope to keep doing that, yeah. That's, after this movie frenzy is over, I hope to revive that and turn that around. It's a, it's a piece of theater, and uh, I was really proud of it. The second question is, do you miss 
um, LA, do you regret leaving? I'm still in LA, and yes, I regret that too. <laughs> Now, as you can see from those glimpses, I have a beautiful house. I love my house. It's my little hideaway from the world. That's what LA is about, finding your own secret garden and just kind of sticking around, stay off the freeways. First of all, I want to compliment the director because, uh, if I, you know, if you look at that film, you've gone back to, there's so much footage from your past. <laughs> and, and so many images and pieces of art that you've done in your past. I can't imagine the work that went into just deciding what would go in, what got edited out. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, that, that was not easy. And the monumental task was done by Chris Bradley, whose name you see all over this. He's editor, producer, cinematographer, uh, life coach, just all of it. Um, and we, had, we shot for two and a half years. There were 300 hours of footage, 50 hours of home videos that he had shot in the 80s, um, all that behind the scenes Pee Wee stuff. No one had ever seen that. That was in the shoebox for 30 years. And now we're seeing it for the first time. Uh, 200 gigs of photos, um, and there was a lot of stuff. In. My goal was to get as much as I could in, uh, but you can't, we couldn't get it all in. But we, hopefully we got as much of it as we could in there, because I really wanted it to be a visually appealing movie. So that was the goal, just pack as much as we could in there. I just wanted to know what your kids are doing now. And I don't know what the time frame was when they were being interviewed. That was about a year and a half ago that you saw them there. Uh, my son is in uh, Oakland at the California College of the Arts. He's a painting major. And he's a killer painter. He's turning 20 uh, next uh, month and he's doing great. Uh, in fact, he sold, he sold some paintings and he's using the money to go to Spain for first time this summer to Barcelona, so that's my boy. And uh, my daughter is also an incredibly talented artist. She won a uh, scholarship to the, to the Oxbow School of Art in Napa Valley, where she spent this whole spring semester uh, in a very beautiful, incredibly uh, gorgeous art school. And she'll be coming back to LA after May to have her uh, senior year in Los Angeles, and they're both really talented artist. Turned out pretty good. <laughs> and I don't always ride my daughter like that. <laughs> Neil told me to do that too. <laughs> I'm his puppet. Uh, hello. So I was a b big fan of both Pee Wee's Playhouse and Beekman's World growing up. And the, the movie is plenty about Pee Wee, but not much about Beekman, so you, you can speak more about your work on that job. Well, Beekman's World was a great job. It lasted four years. In fact, it was probably my steadiest job I've ever had as a freelancer. I had an office there, a soundstage in Hollywood. I'd go to work every day. And the main thing I did on Beekman's World is I learned how to animate. And I did all the animation on an old Commodore Amiga computer with a program called the Lux Paint 4. And uh, that's the only time that piece of... With, and I drew it with a mouse. <laughs> And uh, that's like going in front of, you know, and it was broadcast internationally on CBS. That's like getting up in front of the world with the cheapest Japanese Stratocaster knockoff guitar, you know, <laughs> playing a solo for a stadium or something. And that's where I learned how to animate. And I did tons of animation on that show. And uh, that's what drove me crazy, actually. And it's a man killer. You can't do it by yourself. But nobody could, would tell me that. And I like to do stuff on my own. That's why I got out of Hollywood. I was tired of collaborating and everybody else getting all the credit. I was tired of being the secret weapon that they kept in the back room. So this movie is like my sweet revenge on all of that mess. Yeah, but Beekman's World was all in all a great experience. I did mean, the sets too, and Paul Zloom, as you saw, was an incredibly talented performer. And I'm happy to hear that it was a huge hit in Brazil. I meet Brazilians all the time. They don't want to hear about Pee Wee. They want to hear about Beekman's world. That's cool. I like it. So we have time for two more questions. Hi, my name is Jeff Bradley. I'm the director of Beekman's World. Um, just out of curiosity, do you do any digital art? What tools do you do when you do it? Uh, well, I have graduated from the Commodore Amiga. Uh, I use a Mac and I use uh, Illustrator. 
I, I do uh, drawings in Illustrator. Yeah, that's a great program. So that's a boring answer, I know. <laughs> Any of you graphic artists out there know what I'm talking about. The good old Illustrator. It's the coin of the realm, you know, as far as like. And, and they can take Illustrator drawings and animate them and so. stuff. I, I love the you know I love the digital world, but I always warn people you know I always warn students there's not the computer has no ideas none it's 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 you there's no idea in a computer it's like a hammer a hammer doesn't build the house you know you bring the you know you bring the ideas computers are just a dumb tool like anything else. I love the Smashing Pumpkins video that you did. I wondered if. Uh you know, what they thought of the video once it came out, and um, did it cost a fortune to get permission to use it in the film? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and yes. <laughs> they loved it, you know. I mean, that thing was a big deal. It won Video of the Year, uh, and it also won the I got Best Art Direction, and the Pumpkins loved it, even though I didn't meet a one of them, you know. Uh, but yeah, it was a huge success. But it was, you know, like all of my successes in Hollywood, they all rang hollow for me because I want to be an independent artist. I want my vision forefront. I don't want to make somebody else look good. I got tired of that, so. But I was, you know, happy to work on it. I'm very proud of it. Hey, thank you, Toronto. Man, this is fantastic. Fan-fucking-tastic. I love you all. Thanks for coming. And um, beautiesembarrassing.com, facebook.com slash beautiesembarrassing, and the Twitter is at WayneWhiteDoc. Please follow us and tell everyone you like us. Oh, meet and greet is back. We're gonna, Wayne's going to go back to the Summit Place Hotel at 4 o'clock. Come on over and say hello. It's the, the meet and greet is 46. Thank you guys, and don't forget to vote. Bye.